Good evening, all, and welcome to Calabar's Corner for another episode of This Just In, a show that we shouldn't need, but for now, we're here and focusing on transparency and what is happening in the known world. I am Baron Calabar Geiler, and for this show, we're taking a look back. Now, ordinarily, this show focuses on key topics and that are hitting the presses today. Today's info is a little more of an analysis, a perspective of data. Uh, that has recently become relevant and has been talked about in the last couple of our shows. Uh, here with that deep dive and just a phenomenal analysis, and I'm going to do this right, Boer Mahuin Waruan. Good evening, sir. Hey there. Thanks for having me on. Did I get it, did I get it right? You got it. Yeah! As a herald, that's personal victory. I'll take it. Uh, so, Mahuin, if you will... Tell us a little who you are, where you're from, just so we can get to know you as a person and not just as, uh, you know, some awesome words. Sure. So um, I'm Mahuin. I'm uh, in the modern world. I'm a, a web developer of many, many years. Uh, and I'm also in the modern world. I'm just coming off a, a sore throat this weekend, so my voice is a little bit off. But um I've been involved in the SCA for about seven, eight years uh, since uh, my wife, who's a, a lifer, uh, sucked me in. Uh, and I'm uh, here in the Crown Province of Uskarth, uh, which is uh, in the, the modern world is New York City, here in the East Kingdom. Uh, and I kind of wear too many hats uh, from Harold to uh, youth combat to uh, working with uh, our local seneschals and kind of trying to help out where I can. And I'm, you know, I'm, I am, uh, as they say, I'm a, I have a very particular set of skills. Uh, so I'm, I'm not a great fighter. I'm not a great artist or performer. Uh, but I'm in areas around kind of technology and uh, analysis, um, I have these skills that it turns out uh, are relevant to the SCA. And it's been super fun finding ways to leverage those kind of not obviously SCA related skills in a way that uh, that turns out to to play well with, uh, with the SCA. Yeah, so... Until very recently, you were an unknown to me. Uh, now, it turns out I've been working with your work on the heraldic side for quite some time, and, and I want to publicly thank you for, good God, your, your heraldic resource as well. Um, but you popped up with, in one of our recent shows as uh, in a reference to, to some of the stuff we were working on. And uh, I know uh, Joe and Ducky and I started digging through some stuff and were like, holy crap, look at this data. Uh, so... Let's let's talk a little bit of a backstory first about what you've done on that side. I'm going to post a link to the chat or uh, in the in chat here to your website, creativeadministration.org. Uh, and for those out there in the chat, if you're out there in the chat watching, please introduce yourself uh, out in the chat. Let us know who you are, where you're from. If you have any questions during this, drop them out there. We will address them as is uh, relevant. Um, we are going to talk through a lot of the data that's out there. Uh, so this may be a little dry, but also there's a bit of a narrative that's going to be built. So we'll see. Uh, so, who and what did you do? Like, how did this start? How did you just like, I want to start a blog today? Like, what happened? So, um, I've been doing a lot of stuff kind of around the periphery um, for for years. And it you know, kind of um, comes out of being a 
technologist, like I see things and I like, oh, that's a bug. We should fix it. Uh, and that um, experience of trying to do the same thing that I would do in my modern life with the SCA worked great at the local level where people were like, oh, great. We'll help, love your help fixing the website or whatever. But when it came to the society level, I kept hitting these kind of friction points. So I'd send an email off saying, oh, like I found a bug on a, you know, a broken link on the sca.org website and I would not hear back. And I was like, uh, why is that? And mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so I sort of started by accident building up a collection of these sort of stories of kind of frustrating things at the at the society level that that should be easy to fix but that that weren't and so one um, kind of thing that will that will come back to um, later on was just going through the trying to find the board minutes right so um, this started a few years ago I was putting together history of East Kingdom branches, like when they were founded and what happened to the ones that were dissolved and so on. And there's a record of all of those happening in the board minutes. Uh, but the only way to get to them was like to log into the members portal, and download them one at a time. It was super frustrating. You couldn't search it. And so if I wanted to find like, when was this branch, I couldn't search for the branch name and find all the minutes that mentioned it. Pop right. Up. So I was like frustrated and as so I went and downloaded every single copy of every quarter's minutes from, from the website, which went back maybe eight years, 10 right. years. Uh, and then I was like telling people like, it's super annoying that the, it only goes back eight years. And someone was like, ah, but they used to be on SCA.org before they changed their policy in 2012. Right. I was like, oh, well, the, I know there are websites, third-party services that crawled all of the popular websites every month for the last 20 years and saved copies of them. And sure enough, I went and looked and copies of SCA.org have been saved. So you can go back and see what the webpage looked like five years ago or 10 years ago. And those old copies of the website had the old minutes on them. So I downloaded all of those minutes. So I got another decade of minutes and I was talking to people casually about this. So someone said, Oh, I saved all the minutes from the 1970s and 1980s. It's like, oh, great, send them. To... And at first I was like uh, hesitant to post those anywhere or to kind of like make it kind of public that I had collected those because like maybe there was a reason that you couldn't find them. Right. Um, and I was like, was I going to get in trouble? And um, then... I realized like society is publishing them. They aren't marked confidential. There's a clear public interest in making them available. Right. So I should put them on my website. Um, and that kind of, that kind of thing of like having a little interaction and then being like, this is information that shouldn't be secret. Um, kind of snowballed into building this website and keep as a place to put all of these little interactions I was having in one central location. Nice. Okay. So, so, that's interesting. so I was just going through, so you got three pages of documents out there. So it looks like your first one came back in like 2021. Um, and I think your, your, your more recent ones are the ones that are the, the sort of the hot button issues of, of today. Yeah. Um, but you've got a lot, like there's even, uh, I think on page two it talks about the, uh, the optical illusion of the DEI shirt, right? That was the thing we talked about on here too, that just frustrates me to no end, but that's a whole different thing. Um, just a coincidence just, that the white you know, sword is first and larger. It's like, just to... how do you, anyways. Okay. So uh, let's go through, I want to sort of go back from the, your, your most recent and, and back a little bit and just try to talk through what we've got there. Um, so, you know, so Joe and Ducky and I talked about the, the, the last board meeting, some of the problems they had with that. And, we talked about some of the um, the, the comment from the, the executive system of the 125 uh, thing and some of the reasoning around that. So I know your most recent one is, is, is called a decade of sanctions. 
where you and someone did a did it's sort of analysis of the sanctions for the last decade, I guess. Or, yep. or so what, what did what did you find? Sort of what was your the purpose of that? So the, that that kind of investigation was definitely or the, certainly the posting about it was definitely triggered by that social media firestorm around the 125 is half a percent and um and it builds on this previous collection of of board minutes and some some previous um research that i and another person had been doing going back through the minutes to extract a list of of sanctions because so this, this is the kind of um long-running issue that people get um, r and d or the, the temporary version of that, which is TRP, used to be called expulsion. But there's no like master list of, of those that regular people can access. There's a thing called the Big Book of Sanctions, and there's a similar thing that the, uh, that the um, Seneschals have access to of people whose statuses are indeed uh, that's available as a data file, but there's not like a convenient way. So if you happen to be like some random person working at gate and someone shows up, like, how are you supposed to know? Like, I'm not, I should not let this person into my event. Right. Well, and you say that Seneschals have access to it, but I've, I've heard from a lot of Seneschals recently. They went, that's a thing. What? It's, it's so, kept under yeah. very, uh, very tight cover. And there's been steps forward and like, let's make it more public. And then they get walked back. Right. But all of this information is in the board minutes, at least supposedly. And so there was this, this kind of ongoing effort to extract that information and make it available. And when the whole fuss came up about what did 125 refer to, we thought like, hey, now's a moment to like dust off that previous round of research and see like what what might it refer to. Right. Um, and so we kind of updated that um, initial round of data analysis. Uh, a friend of mine uh, did some um, some coding to look for uh bits of text in the minutes that looked right. like they might be referring to sanctions uh and then i and some other people went through the minutes by by eye and added or removed things from that list we ended up with a list of what we think are reasonably accurately all of the r d and trp actions from the board minutes of the last decade and i'm so, a very um, kind of manual and imprecise process. We could totally be off here right. and there, missed a few, caught, included one that then later got rescinded and it shouldn't have been included. And then none of this is, is with 100% accuracy. It's just to get a, a sense of like roughly what are the numbers. Um, and uh, based on that, um, I put together some some information again as a little bit of like uh hesitation on my part about publishing this because this information is available at the society level and they decline to publish it in this kind right. of easily accessible way so like am i someone going to show up and say that i'm like breaking a rule but there's no rule written down right that says you can't do this yeah. and all and, the information and, like you didn't go in and like hack their server and steal their steal nope. their big book yeah no nope. All the, yeah. And this, I'm just, all I'm doing is going through information that was published and collecting bits of it in one place. And I'm very clearly stating, like, there's not an official anything. Right. You should not use this list as your decision-making basis for shunning some guy in your barony because he's on the list. Like, don't take my word for it. Go and look at the actual documents go talk to your Seneschal. Like this is a, this is like a proof of concept data, you know, effort. That's um, that's just to kind of give us a sense of where things are. 
And, and yes, Krista, I said the H word. I said hack on air. I'm going to get R&D now. It's a thing. Don't say hack around here, folks. It'll yeah, we're coming, we're coming to that. We're coming right. to that topic in a bit. Um, all right, so before you move on, I want to pull this data up. So I, I, I just uh, screen shared the data here. So I, I have to say something. I first pulled this up and saw the number 125 on here and had a good chuckle. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's happenstance, but... So can you kind of break down what we're looking at here and sort of make it make sense? Sure. So um, uh, there's another file linked to further down that includes the individual yeah. list of, you know, on this date, so-and-so got, you know, got an R&D issued and these board members voted for it and it was official. Uh, and so we just collected those and then we, um, did some some high level categorization to separate out which ones were R and Ds, which ones were were TRPs, temporary removals, mm. um, and I, we did not do a very thorough job of counting the royal banishments and the other kind of administrative sanctions. I've got those in here for the ones that we counted, but there's definitely a lot of those that are in the minutes that we did not count, um, and then we split those out by year so that you could get a sense of like, were there changes in time in how many R and D's were issued in from one year to another? And how did that mm. kind of pattern change over time? There's a few kind of interesting things that, that show up. You see um, R and D's kind of come to an almost complete halt in 2014 and 2015. Yeah. And then there's a big spike of them in 2016. My understanding without any like official word is that th there were internal changes being made mm -hmm. to the sanctions process that caused some of those that might've gotten started in 2015 to get pushed off until that process was tweaked. And then they kind of caught up on the backlog. There's one right. or two board meetings in uh, April, 2016, I think it is that has like three or four days back to back of them working through wow. working through these cases of like, we have to talk about this guy, we have to talk about this person and what happened in this case and issuing a whole bunch of R&Ds as a result of that. So that that's sort of one kind of interesting thing that came out of that, uh, out of that data. Um, and there's some other kind of um, caveats that, that go in here. So there's a, a bunch of numbers um, listed in the, expulsion which is the old name for the the temporary rnp uh the temporary removals mm. um which mostly come up from the kingdom level they're rarely issued at the society level they generally come up from the kingdom level and then the society upholds them as a temporary measure and decides yeah. then do we move to an r d to make it permanent or do we say oh we we take it back we we think the kingdom made a mistake or do we let it roll out through the rest of that reign and then expire? So there's some people who are, you can't kind of count this as the total number of people because there are people who show up first as a TRP and right. then three months later they get an R&D. So you can't kind of add up those two lines and say that's how many people were affected. So, so yeah, that, that 100 may be part of the, is part of the 125 or some part that's of right. that is part of the Some, some chunk of those people who get the TRP then three months or six months or a year later get an R and D and some of them don't, the society says, we think that the temporary removal was a sufficient action and we're going to let that expire. Right. We'll let that expire. And then um, that's enough. And in a few cases they say like, no, that was actually a mistake. We should, we should undo that action altogether. So, yes. And, yeah. So, so Chris, you're, you're correct. You're, usually the expulsion is something the crown can do at, at whim to trigger that investigation. Usually that's the, the, the yep. start. And so we were definitely not attempting to make like an actual case file that mm -hmm. tracked all of these people from, you know, they got reported in this kingdom and then they went to society. In some cases, uh, the board directs the, the society seneschal to take action right. uh, as we'll see in a, in a case that we're going to talk about later but m more often it comes up from the kingdom level and going through all of those cases to figure out what's the you know 
which way do you want to count things? It would be a, a larger project than right. I or any of the people who were assisting me wanted to engage and in. Honestly, probably not worth the effort, realistically. I mean, other than if you're you're data nerds or data nerds, I get it, but it's I think what's there gives us a really good idea of it's it's a problem. one hopes that the society has their own internal master data list that has that information clearly set forth. But I, well, I, I, to match your facial expression, I have a little bit of skepticism that right. the number is, you know, a hundred percent exactly, you know, I think it may, there may be some estimation going on. Yeah. Um, so the, um, the interesting one thing that I took out of that, um, out of that experience was, so there, you end up with, if you look at the, so if we go back to Sorry, the original 125 is over the last five years is half a percent of the total membership. Right. So if you look at just the last five years and you pull out just the R and D's minus the two R and D's that are later rescinded, come up with 84. Mm -hmm. That's like uh that's a, ballpark and not 100% but that's a one figure to work with um, interestingly when you instead of working it from this side from the um, from the board minute side if you instead look at the numbers that are sent to the seneschals of the local groups with a membership status mm -hmm. everyone whose membership status is uh, is R and D or uh, or TRP temporary removal uh, or a couple of other things like they're check balanced when they're trying to pay for their renewal. A couple other kinds right. of expenses gets reported in a list. And while I don't have access to that file, I have been told by people who do have access to it that it has different numbers. Right, and no idea why it's different. That they have lower numbers for the TRPs in uh, for, for the R and D's in recent years and higher numbers for the TRPs. Hmm. Uh, hard to, hard to know for sure, but they come up with ballpark over the five year period, similar scale. Right. So what I took from all of that is that if you, counted the R&Ds and the TRPs that haven't yet expired and the kingdom level banishments uh, that in fact, on the whole, an estimate of about 125 for the number of society members who are blocked from participating today is at least on the right order of magnitude. And I can't, you know, I don't know what numbers the, for, you know, the, the society president was looking at when he made this comment offhand. I'm, you know, it totally sounds like it was a, in a context in which no one was like, had the report to hand and was like checking for the latest number. They were like using a ballpark. Right. But m my sense was that it, like that was a plausible number. Um is, and is I it say, possible? Is it possible he was looking at your report? Is it po like? Is it we're going to surmise? Just the, saying. The, this this report was definitely put together after he he. Oh, okay. uh, right. So the the fact that they both say one twenty five over there is a total <laughs> coincidence. Um, and I I say all that not at all to um, undermine the the outrage, which I mm. think is legitimate. Um, I I do. I get a little nervous when um, the the outrage is directed primarily at a woman in a in a um, support role rather than at a man in uh, the executive role. And so, I think if folks want to be outraged, they might shift their attention over one one step in that. 
or pa- chart. Pause for a minute because I totally forgot to do something. Speaking of being outraged, the views and opinions expressed here on this show are those of participants, not reflect any official policy or position of SC Incorporated, Baronies, Kingdoms we are part of, or societies that we are members of. Sorry, absolutely true. Um, so yeah, no, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think that's a that's a, a great point. And one of the things I talked about with some of the folks off uh, off the record was let's be mad, but also there's other things we can be mad about. We should be mad about a lot of things. I, I appreciate this is sort of the, the straw that broke the camel's back, right? And I, the, the, the parallel that, that occurs to me is Marie Antoinette saying, let them eat cake. Right. Uh, and so a, like she, it turns out she didn't actually say that. Uh, and B like, she wasn't the one starving the peasants and the sans culottes, right? It was her husband, the King who was actually the p- person in a position of power and so it feels like a little bit um, misguided to center our anger on Marie Antoinette or whoever the parallel may be in, in the current situation. But uh, the, there's still something about that moment that and the, and the you know, let them eat cake and the half a percent that crystallizes a sense that the populace has that the leadership is out of step and not attuned to their concerns and is, is frankly, is contemptuous Mm -hmm. of their position. And so even if she didn't actually say, let them eat cake. And even if, you know, in this particular case, the reference to 125 people was, you know, not was actually a legitimate thing and was fit into what the SCA's official story of explaining that comment is, the moment is still um, still instructional as a, as a moment for everyone to look around and be like, whoa, like we all agree that there's something wrong and that there's like a disconnect between us regular people and the, mm-hmm. and the leadership and even if Marie Antoinette is not the the proper target of our anger, uh, it, it's still useful to take this moment and try and try and use it as a as a moment where we get together and organize to not to storm the Bastille, but to you know to push for some kind of larger scale structural change uh, that that might address the the underlying concerns. Right. All right. So speaking of underlying concerns, so let's go through. So we've, I think we've got some more data here to cover. I really want to get into uh, some specifics here. So moving down your list. So you've got the archives out there, the board minutes and, and some just amazing data. You've got the decade of sanctions information, but then there's a specific sanction of Brian. So the sanction of Brian DeMarais and uh, this came on the tail end of the, the Wistrick saga but actually was, was predated some of that. So uh, what was your data in there? So what, what do you, what did you find? Um, and and was, or what was the impetus of some of the digging into that? If you don't mind. Sure. So um, uh, the, the case of Brian DeMoray, um only came to my attention um, after it was mentioned uh, in Aaron Harper's, Tale of Six Sanctions, mm-hmm. uh, right up about the the Wistrick saga, uh, and I was I was uh, disappointed that I hadn't heard about it earlier because uh, it's a story about software development, which is uh, near near and dear to my heart. Um, and uh, at at first, we didn't kind of the, the details were vague, but then um, Brian got permission to. Uh, release additional details, and I spent a while talking with him and wrote it up on my blog. And it was um, it was kind of shocking to um, hear it all hashed out as as far as I can tell from the public record, from what Brian's told me, from what appears in the board minutes. And uh, you know, I'm I'm absolutely willing to believe that there's some secret other part of the story that no one's told me that makes Brian look like a terrible person. And they say, Oh, obviously he should have been sanctioned, but like, 
if there is, it's being kept secret. And so I, you know, I can't really incorporate it into my judgment, but from where I'm sitting, it looks like Brian is in the modern world, uh, a technologist in the, uh, in the context of the SCA, he's was kingdom rapier marshal has served these other roles in Atlantia rapier community, uh, and was dealing with this like super common problem that we have of um, keeping track of warrants and reports and all of this kind of paperwork that goes into uh, into running a, a martial activity at the kingdom level and um, address that by putting his technology skills to, to work and building a system to track all of that information in a database and uh, update it with uh, data files that get sent out from the society level that have lists of members so that if someone's membership expires or if someone wants to get made into an official marshal, you can check and see, like, do they have a real membership? Is it a current? Yes, we can issue them a, a, war a warrant. And then when their membership expires, we can take their warrant away uh, and keep track of that paperwork on a website, you know, with the passwords and all of the kind of stuff that we do to, to track data these days. And so that all seemed to be going great. And this was in back in 2019 and, and mm -hmm. leading up to that. And then um, a bunch of other kingdoms said, hey, that's great. And we all have to deal with the same paperwork. We should all want to use the same kind of system. And he said, great, I'd, I'm willing to for free, build out that system and make it available to uh, to other kingdoms. Folks at the at the society level said, "Great, we'll set up some space for you to work on this on mm -hmm. one of the web servers." And he's off coding, coding away, and posts one day a comment on his Facebook fa feed about a thing he had tried to a feature he had tried to add. Uh, yeah, th so this is, this is the, this is the, the Facebook comment that seemed so innocuous, but then went everything went terribly wrong. Um, we said, oh, I, I came up with this idea about how to synchronize information from the, the warrant reporting system to get current membership status without the folks at the kingdom level, having to download the list of membership numbers and then re-upload it to my system, but it didn't work out. He said there was he put together a hack, which is in the in the software field, right? Like uh, you just like trying something out. It's not like a professional thing that you actually intend to use, but like put something together. Turned out it would, didn't work great. He's not going to use it. It goes on to work on something else, but a week later someone has taken that comment and gone to the board of directors and said, ah, this guy in Atlantia is hacking your membership data. I don't know who it was who reported this, but someone did. And apparently someone with enough pull that it went from his Facebook profile to the board of directors meeting in six days uh, without stopping to pass go at, kingdom level or right. running it by the you know the society it person as far as i can tell who had given brian permission to work on this on the society web servers i was gonna say you you can't hack something you're given the key to essentially like it's, it doesn't work that way and and the only way the whole system worked was someone could give Brian's system, their own SCA username and password, their own member number and password, and say, go use my password to confirm that I'm right. really a current member. So it's like nothing could be done unless the person w participated and it was no one's getting their secret information. And the, the sum total of the information that he got was this membership number is current or it isn't. So it's like... Right. Which is, yeah, which is, so it's like not PII, widely, it's not confidential widely data. distributed. That data is being sent to every seneschal and passed around kingdom officers who all have to check that information. 
it's not super confidential. The the, um, the society's, uh, the, the web ministry's policies about personally identifiable information don't consider member numbers or member names, society names, to be the kind of protected personal okay. information that would require kind of a heightened level of scrutiny. So what he did was not at all shocking. And as I, it's hard for me to imagine why anyone would object to it other than they looked and they saw the word hack and they like had a, you know, like a moment where they were like uh, watching, you know, CSI or something. And the code is like floating around and they were like, they're hacking the system. Right. Um, it, it, so, it clearly was, it was reflecting off his glasses the whole time. I know it was. Right. Yeah. And so he was sanctioned. He was told he couldn't hold any office for a year, which made him step down as Kingdom Rapier Marshal. Uh, and uh, uh, and they, you know, everyone had to scramble to to find a replacement. And he said, "Well, I'm not building." any society level IT, anything like I'm going to get sanctioned for it. Right. Uh, so then he appealed, they like lost the pay paperwork and he had to like resubmit it. And it all took months. And they said, okay, fine. You're only, you're only sanctioned for six months and the six months passed and he got put back into his previous position and kind of it was, like picked up again. But he's now burned by this experience yeah. and doesn't want to uh, do additional uh, IT work at the society level. And the other folks who have heard this story, who do similar kind of work, like a bunch of folks in the web ministry who are building code that handles membership numbers, like are all like, well, wait a second. Like, am I going to get in trouble now? Right. It's, it's a, yeah. Like, I'm actually doing the thing you're yelling him for. Like, and I'm... part of the sanction was, oh, you, you're in trouble because you un announced this, that there was this problem and you didn't follow standard operating procedures for addressing uh, a data security issue. And it turns out, the SCA doesn't have any standard operating procedures for addressing data security yeah. issues. There's never, no, no policy on that has ever been written down. Right. It, it, it's in the same book where their community standards are currently written. <laughs> and the, the thing that makes it like even more painful for me is that I, I learned this whole story just a few weeks after going through the experience of discovering the breach the data breach mm -hmm. of the SCA comments archive, which is an amazing story on its own. I'll get, like compress it into the short version. Yeah, let's but, roll, roll it down. So um, back in January, I was doing some research about a lawsuit that some folks in my area filed in federal court against the SCA, which is mm -hmm. like a whole nother story for another day. Um, and I was searching for some information about that case. And Google, one of the Google search results was a letter that one of the plaintiffs in that case had sent to the board of directors saying, like, basically, I'm going to sue you. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And went off to add it to my, like, 10,000 word saga about how this whole local case had unfolded. And a few days later, I was like, well, wait a second. Why was that letter <laughs> on a public website like how, how did i get to that yeah uh and i went back and dug around and realized that there are like thousands of emails that were sent by society members to the board of directors that the due to a software error the sca had been publishing on their website in a url that was not obvious it was not a you know, it was not on the homepage, but if you kind of went to somewhere and went to somewhere else and like happened to follow a particular chain of links, you got to this place where thousands of emails were published. And so I was reading through this archive of all of these emails that were sent to the board. And it's like, what? amazing that they made all of this public and it kind of amusing to like 
discover who had written in to complain about the SCA being ruined by wokeism or that they should definitely not create any new peerages because all the real knights fought with swords. And so like the archers definitely should not be included. Of course not. No. Yeah. I was like, okay. Amusing to like encounter these retrograde opinions and nice to see the folks who had written into the board to voice their support for the DEI initiatives or Mm -hmm. asking for additional flexibility when the COVID precautions got, uh, got ratcheted Mm -hmm. down. But then I saw people who had written in about getting harassed and like it had their name on it and the person who was harassing them and like, uh, that that just seems like that should not be public. And then I came across a eyewitness account of a sexual assault where the person who was being targeted was someone I knew. And I was like, Whoa, this like definitely cannot be on the internet. Uh, and so, like, I sent, a, like, my hair is on fire email to the so- relevant society officers and logged into, like, all of the, like, web ministry and interkingdom chats. It was like, we got to fix this right away. And to my surprise, someone was like, oh, yeah, I found that problem two weeks ago and emailed society about it. And they haven't done anything yet. And I was like, there is email about people being raped with their names on it and the SCA published it on their website. Like someone's going to get sued every minute that you leave that up there. It's just making it worse. Like you have to do something right now. And by making like made a big fuss about it. And by the end of the day, the link I had sent in stopped working and they'd, right. they'd taken it down. It, except a couple days later, someone noticed that there was another link that had all of that same information that was still up four days later. They hadn't actually taken it off the server. They had just like patched the one hole that I found. Then they patched that hole. And right. I found like there's a whole bunch of internal staff only mailing lists that were vulnerable in the exact same way. I was going to say, yeah, I was reading through the notes here. So SCA dash comments mailing list, the finance mailing list, member communications, communications, communication, communications committee. And then like some handbook ones too, which why the frig does the card in handbook have a website, whatever. Um, So that's, there was, you list 2,782 emails just for one of those message lists. And so then after they fixed the problem, I was like, now you have an obligation, like maybe not a legal obligation. I'm not an expert in California law, which is I think where, what would be applicable, but, and, and the, the kinds of data breach, yeah. laws are different from state to state and i don't really i'm not a lawyer say, yeah this this falls almost in the federal territory because it's communications thing so it's like an fcc problem it's a it, it like, could be a bigger putting deal even all, putting all of that aside yeah. like from a moral level you have an obligation to go and tell people that the email that they sent you about their being sexually harassed that you had published that on the internet like that the thing that they thought they had told you in confidence was in fact, no longer confidential. And if you sent an email to the board and you felt like they weren't reading it, maybe that's true, but somebody else was reading it. So, and they were like, uh, we'll have to bring that to the board to see if they want to tell anyone. And I was like, you have to tell people. Right. Uh, and so I kept emailing them every couple of weeks and being like, you have to, they're like, oh, we're, we're talking about it. They're going to talk about it at the next meeting. Are they going to, Maybe it's on the agenda for the conference call. And two months later, they finally put out an announcement, which had some errors and we had to get those fixed. But they did eventually. And I wish that they had taken the like additional step of emailing all of those individual people, because right. that's, in fact, best practice for Internet security. If you breach your system is breached and you reveal someone else's data, you have kind of a duty to go and notify them. And this SCA decided they didn't need to do that. But then to go from that moment to then hearing Brian's case where they said, oh, you random guy in Atlantia, you didn't handle things according to best practices of internet security. And so you're going to get sanctioned. And like, what about your own thing that just happened a month ago? It, it left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, right. So I've written uh, 
heartfelt letter to uh, to the society president and seneschal and board, asking them to reconsider the the sanction against Brian. And I um, I hope that I, I know a number of other people have done so as well. And I hope that um, I hope that they reconsider that and that they withdraw it both because it's the right thing to do and because it's a, got a real chilling effect on everyone who's considering or who has been doing technical work right. for the society and now has to be like, whoa, am I, are they going to back me up or are they going to, as with happened with, with Ris, Wistrick, right. there's some like, oh, like he said, she said, and like you random guy, you're getting sanctioned. And like no sense that there's like support or careful consideration or a process that's or a process, whatever. frankly, in reasoning. And I think that I think that's really the issue is the, the lack of reasoning and the lack of due process and the lack of consistency, uh, or rather inconsistency in this case, being the technical term. Um, I think that's been the issue, uh, and that's really well sp spelled out through those. You, whether it's Brian's case or Wistrick's case, or I'm sure there's a dozen other sort of similar things we could talk about. Um, but yeah, it, it's hard to now want to volunteer to do things for the society because it's a risk. And um, people have said to me like, oh, you should, you should stop. You should cancel your membership or you should stop volunteering. Or... There was this other episode where I spent a bunch of time writing a handbook about mm -hmm. uh, about release forms and how the society can't take something that someone wrote and publish it as theirs without getting their permission in writing. So I wrote, wrote this long thing and then the society published it without getting my consent in writing. It's like exactly, exactly the thing that the handbook is about. You can't do that. And people are like, oh, you should sue the SCA because they've infringed your copyright. And like, I, I mean, it's, you know, maybe it's weird, but like, I love this game. Right. And I love the community that, that emerges within it. And, you know, somehow like doing something that like screws up the game is like the last thing on my agenda. Uh, it's like, it's like you, you could shoot the nuclear missile, sure, but then we don't. None of us get to play in the backyard anymore, right? And mm, yeah. So the the question is, what can I do? What can we all do as individuals to kind of get folks to acknowledge that there's a problem and figure out how to solve it? And I, I mean, on some level, it's it's super challenging because. The problem is not, as far as I can tell, that there's like all of the people individually involved are evil. And if we could just fire everyone on the board and fire the president and fire the executive assistant and replace them with other people, that it would magically like reset and everything would be great because you know the board members only serve for a couple of years. The president and and the executive assistant have longer uh longer terms but they also turn over and these problems aren't like just from the last five years they go back for decades right and so there's clearly some kind of structural problem that requires an intervention that's not just like that one guy screw him we're going to get him kicked out and then the problem's going to go away it needs real changes to the way the board is operated and the way the sanctions process works and the way that decision-making happens at a society level. There's a, there's a kind of a culture at the society level of, uh, of opacity and, and closed inness that's most visible around sanctions because it's the mm. most kind of, um, hot button issue and right. people want the information and they refuse to give it but well, and, similar... and there's usually emotion attached to that so yep 
people care. Yeah. But but similar things happen on a zillion other kinds of just petty, small decision making things where you ask a question and they instead of saying, Oh, let's have a conversation about it in public, they go off and there's a secret cabal and then a decision gets announced and that's what we're stuck with. And I, I think there are better ways to do things. And my experience in working with political organizations that are dependent on volunteers and in working in open source software that's dependent on volunteers is that you have to have a system of organizing people that incorporates those volunteers into your decision-making process and that has that work done in public in a way that provides transparency and allows people with in information to contribute it in the areas that they have expertise on. So like this announcement about the comments archive being posted, like it went up and it said that a year of messages had been released. And in fact, it was three years and they do, I had to like go and people sent them messages and they fixed it. But like, why was that announcement done in a secret? There's no, you know, new handbooks come out and there's never like, here's the draft policy that we think we're going to impose. Everyone has to adhere to never gets put out in a draft form for discussion. Mm -hmm. There's like a tiny little group that goes off and has that discussion. And then the finished product gets dumped on everyone and you all have to live with it. And when you look at a lot of kind of modern decision-making processes that depend on volunteers. There are ways that the volunteers or the members of the society, depending on how you want to look at it, can have influence on and participate in those processes. And none of that's getting done now. Right. And so makes me, um, makes me hopeful that this is a, uh, a problem that we can fix while also knowing that it's not something that's going to get fixed easily. And so my little part of it is getting as much of this information out in public as I can. And we went out, we had our local East Kingdom crown tournament last weekend. And my wife and I were out with the copies of the paper copies of Aselda's petition for restructuring the board, collected 50 signatures We'll keep doing that at more local events because I think there really is a groundswell of, of discontent and loss of confidence in the populace and a real desire to see meaningful structural reform happen at the society level that will make the society's leadership more accountable and more responsive to the legitimate concerns and aspirations of the local populace. And maybe that's too big of a dream, uh, but I'm I'm optimistic that you know some form of democracy can emerge within our make believe monarchy uh, that uh, that helps to solve these problems. And it's not going to be a magical utopia and you know right. uh, autonomous collective of free individuals. We're still going to have rules and people in charge and other people who have to follow the policies, but it could be better than this. It could be better than this. And we should try to make it better. I agree. Uh, Karen, to answer your question, uh, this is a Zelda de Norban, I believe is her full name. Uh, and the uh, petition's linked out on the Cal Wars corner page and I'll share it again as well. Um, but it's a petition basically calling for restructure is the very short version of it. Thing. And it's also on the same, there's a link to it on the same creative administration org site that Perfect. we're looking at today. So there you go. Awesome. So I, I think I, I loved how I, I, I expect to have to talk a lot more during this, but you are brilliant in for handling that. I was just like, this is the best. I love it. Um, is there anything we didn't cover that you want to talk about through, through the, your research so far, things you found? No, I, there's, there's, there's more stories of, of crazy drama here and there scattered around the society. But I, I think, uh, I think the, the central narrative came across this evening. Uh, and I, I hope that it, um, at least from my perspective, um, 
uh, was accessible to people and that it motivated at least a few people to think like, I'm going to go sign that petition. I'm going to go look for some ways that I can like put a little, put my shoulder to the wheel and try and, and push forward. And I can see, so I recognize some of the names in the comments. Mm -hmm. I know there's a bunch of people watching who are already doing that. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, my, my kudos to them because it's, uh, it's not, you know, as, as much as my blog has only been around for, uh, for a short period of time. And I've only been participating in the SCA for the last seven or whatever years. I know that folks have been struggling with this for ever. And, uh, and I appreciate that work and I'm trying to, trying to call attention to it and, um, and work in solidarity with that ongoing project. And maybe, maybe a better world is possible. Maybe we can make some progress. That's it, man. Oh, and I think at this point, I'm going to say it, it can't get worse. It definitely can't get worse, but we hope it can't get worse. <laughs> Let's, um, please don't, know. don't make it worse. It's not going to jinx it. Uh, but they, Chris made a great point. So, Chris, this is sort of the reason for the show. The reason for these these blogs like this is we're trying to bring this information to you in public. Uh, you know, I, I'm choosing to put it on on video because people don't like to read. Um, people who are doing data dives uh, like Moon here are doing it so that people don't have to read as much. So there's a lot of TLDRs in, in this data. So that's helpful. Um, don't, don't go there. I, I did it. I said it. You can't stop me, Joe. Um, all right. Let me do a couple of show plugs and then we'll do some uh, some wrap ups here because I think this has just been. I, th this whole topic makes me sad. I'll be, I'll be honest. I, I'm, I, I don't want to keep talking about this, these, this junk because it just, it's, it's so disheartening for those of us trying to fix the problems to see the problems, but I'm glad we're getting to talk about, I'm glad we're getting to see them. And I'm glad we have the data to back what we're talking about. And it's not just us going, well, they're pissy at my friend again. Right. That's the, that's the hard part for me is when I'm like, when I was doing this Wistrick talks initially, it's like, I don't want to talk about this because Wistrick's a buddy of mine. And I'm, I'm emotionally connected to this, but also I'm like looking at the data of this is wrong. So, yeah. anywho. All right. A couple show plugs. So, coming up next on Coffee with Cal. Speaking of, this Sunday, I'll be back on uh, with my coffee cup in hand, talking about hypocrisy and lack of action. Uh, take a while, guess where that's coming from? This is going to be <laughs> Cal being mad for a little bit. So, buckle up, buttercup. Uh, if you are in or around the Mississippi area next weekend, um, not this coming weekend, the next weekend, Coming out to Glen Albans Crown List and see Baron Calvarter, the Glen Albans Spring Crown List, totally not gambling or wagers table. Uh, so I will be running book for Glen Albans Crown List. So if you have a favorite fighter you want to come out and make a totally not bet on with totally not real money. Uh, so no real money, but you know, beads and bobbles, that sort of thing. Uh, it's a lot of fun, makes the makes the fighters really uh, the fighters super got into it last time that we did it. So uh, come on and hang out with me. Come meet me and uh, get some cool swag out of it, hopefully. Or if you're in a crown list or a special tournament and need a herald, I know a herald for hire. Come find Baron Calvert. That's me. I, I made that last week, so I figured I'd put it up there. Uh, I'm Mercenary Herald. Hire me for your heraldic needs. And next month on Road to Retention, coming up on 6-4. So you've got just under a month uh, to get in for this one. Ramut will be back uh, with Viscountess Moira of Kent uh, discussing her uh, approach to the SCA. Uh, her and Dude have been, uh, they are my SCA mom and dad from out in the West Kingdom uh, and Prince Valley Mists and amazing people and have an interesting approach to making people feel welcome out there and sort of keeping people engaged uh, from the new to the old. So interesting to hear uh, her approach and sort of what she's done. If you want to support Calvert's Corner and KK Production, everything we support here, look us up on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash KK Production. Join this grand wall of patrons. Uh, this month's rewards just run out. Super happy uh, with the, some of the custom boards that got to do. Uh, and also Patreon sponsored uh, uh, some elevation gifts that went out uh, and some new ones for Remote will be getting made here shortly. So uh, thank you to the patrons who keep that up and make sure we can keep doing all this wacky shit here. Um, last but not least, look at some Redbubble if you want to buy stickers. Uh, search KK Productions on Redbubble, at least as long as Redbubble is there. Redbubble is kind of a pain in the ass right now, so that may be moving soon, but I uh, haven't had time to deal with that, so it's there for now. Uh, Moon, anything you want to promote or pimp or shout out about? Nope. Uh, I, I, uh, I hope that there's no additional drama that causes me to have to write more blog posts, but they probably will it's be, be. Uh, and they'll show up on my, on my blog. Uh, 
There you go. Tune in, tune into this show to check out his blog. I think uh, these are two great places to, to get data. And if there's another relevant topic and we need to bring you back on, you know, I'll call you, man. Uh, happy to have you back on. You were a, a brilliant delight. Um, and those out there watching, keep tuning in, keep watching, keep asking questions, keep questioning the authority, power to the people, you know, be ball of resistance and all that stuff. Uh, but for now, this has been Mahuan and Cal in Calvar's Corner. Have a good night, everybody.